Hey everybody, it's Jesse and Thane here with the Red Wolf Sword Fighting Blog, Chicago Sword Play Guild, and Fortes of Fitness and Martial Arts. Sorry about the do-rag, my, my uh, plague beard is, is actually my plague haircut, and it's getting out of control. Um, so yeah, wrapped up today. Uh, that said, last week we addressed this idea of how to think about fencing, and how to think about training. Is building up, hey, good fencing can happen, and good fencing can happen to you. So how do you do something? How do you do it well? What elements are making it good? And then how do you break it? So last week we came to this close crossing, what I call the, uh, the white belt special, the novice special, of this double kind of close in high crossing. Even if you're good, the novice might force it on you. So we're going to use that as our example today. Thane's going to take this this time into a throw. So Thane, take it away and tell them how to put me on my butt. Sure. OK, guys, so uh, we're continuing from last week. We're still going to be coming into the bind. So basically, when I throw a blow here, and I go here, the firm only uh, when I, what we were doing last week, and the only option I have from this high is to throw a punch right to his head with the palm strike. OK? So that was what we did last week. From there, we, we continued to move on to a elbow strike and then a cut from there. From this week, we're going to start looking at the lower end of it. So basically, that comes in again when I I'm in the line from here, I shoot and I do a palm strike. Jesse's going to again raise his arm like we did last week from here. So this creates this opening from here. That leaves me a point to where I can then step dangerously through him here and then basically continue to stand up with throw. So altogether, again though, from last week, we start off with a pummel strike, whereas he raises. Last week we were coming around with a cut. This time we see an opening from the low end. So that means we could come in and do a throw from there. So it looks like this altogether. So we come in. This raises up from here. I shoot through. Good. Yeah, nice. And so that's good fencing guy. Yeah. He's offering me two threats on the high line, that initial crash, we're getting into that not so great crossing, he's putting in a very real pommel strike that I have to deal with or get hit by. So I'm going into kind of a nice buggy counter, something easy, something quick. He takes advantage and goes to the low line. Now, that everything can be broken, right? So we take a look at that and say, what can break Thane dropping low? So we go through all of that same thing, right? We crash in, there's the pommel, there's high, the thing goes low. Put the head in the basket. If I can, I want to get my foot over his, although I missed it on that rep, so let's do it one more time. Yeah, starting from the top. So, crash, lift, whoop. Step behind that leg and go into Fiori's counter. Easier said than done. I'm not going to lie, if someone's a good fencer, they're probably going to pull off their moves before you realize what's going on. But that doesn't mean you should train like you're going to lose. So, Fiore has that counter, so we take advantage of it and execute it where it fits. I tried to get my pommel in there, Thane dropped below as we the crossing, Thane offered that pommel strike, no, no pommel strike. He comes low, step over, hold him down. So break down your fencing. Where does things fit? When you're solo training and you're cutting in your backyard, think about these kinds of things. Oh, I'm doing my good cutting drills. Okay, great. I get parried, pommel strike. Oh, my pommel strike gets parried, I drop. You should be thinking like that. Adding mental variables. And then when you start fencing, you need less bandwidth to remember the counter. Absolutely. All right, gang, that's all we got for this week. Thank you again very much. See you again soon. Thanks, brother.